Today I want to share with you two tips that will help you tremendously if you are going to be questioned by the defense lawyer in a medical malpractice case, in an accident case, or in a wrongful death case in New York. You want to know what this is all about? Come join me for a walk on the beach as I share with you exactly what this is all about. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. Okay, let's say you sued your doctor or you're contemplating suing your doctor. And now you're thinking about what's going to happen during the course of your lawsuit. One of the things that's going to happen during the course of your lawsuit is that you are going to be asked to go peer and answer questions in a process known as a deposition. A deposition is a question and answer session that takes place, at least in pre-COVID times, in your attorney's office. Now, in, during COVID times, this typically takes place on a Zoom video call. A deposition is designed for the defense lawyer, the lawyer who represents the doctor or the people whom you have sued, to ask you questions about what happened to you and what problems you have now as a result of what occurred. The deposition is critically important for your case. It gives the defense an opportunity to learn from you in your own words exactly what happened and what problems you experience today and what limitations and disabilities you have because of whatever their clients did wrong. All right. You should also know that even though this may appear to be an informal setting, an informal questioning session where this takes place in your attorney's office or on a Zoom video call, the answers that you give carry the same exact weight as if you are testifying at the time of trial, in front of a court, in front of a judge, in front of a jury. So don't think for a second that it's simply a nice conversation between various attorneys in your case. The reality is no, that's not what happens. They're going to be there for hours asking you lots of questions. You could be there all day. And if you fail to follow your attorney's instructions, it could significantly harm you and your case. So in today's video, I want to share with you two important points that will help you dramatically as you decide whether to bring a lawsuit against someone who is careless or if you happen to be in the middle of a case in New York and now you're trying to learn about how these depositions work, this will open your eyes to help you understand what a deposition is and what are two common pitfalls. All right. So now, before you ever get to the point where you are being questioned by the opposing lawyer or lawyers, your lawyer will have an opportunity to prepare you for this questioning. We call it a prep session, a preparation session. And no, contrary to popular belief, it is not an opportunity for the lawyer to tell you what to say in response to certain questions. The simplest advice you're ever going to get from any attorney when it comes to answering questions at a deposition is, tell the truth. It's that simple. Tell the truth. And so many people think, okay, my lawyer is going to tell me exactly what to say so I have a better chance of winning my case. No, 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 that's not what happens. Your lawyer is going to tell you to tell the truth. That's the best thing you could ever do. All right, so now let's talk about some common pitfalls that could detrimentally affect your case. If the defense lawyer asks you a question, and it's a simple, straightforward question like, hey, Mr. Jones, isn't it true that you saw my client, Dr. Gonzalez, on January 1st? That question simply calls for a yes or no answer. Don't turn that around and now give a five-minute explanation about how it was that you set up that appointment and ultimately got to see the doctor on January 1st. That's not what the question asked for. The question did not say, hey, Mr. Jones, tell me in detail all the steps that you took in order to make that appointment to see my client, Dr. Gonzalez, on January 1st. Well, first I had to call the office, and then they, they didn't have an appointment, so he had to check with the doctor, and then once they checked with the doctor, they got back to me. No, no, no. That's not the correct answer. The correct answer to this question was yes. That's it. Once you've answered the question, stop talking. It's a very simple, straightforward question. Isn't it true that you saw my client on January 1st? It's yes or no. Listen very carefully to the question that is being posed. Because if you now go ahead and give a long-winded answer for something that should have been a simple, simple, direct answer, like, yes, I did, then what have you done? You've established and shown to the opposing lawyer that you're not listening to the question. 
you've established that if your case gets to trial, the defense lawyer, when he asks a simple, straightforward question, he knows you're going to give a long-winded answer for whatever reason, thinking that giving longer answers is going to be beneficial for you and your case. By doing that, he knows now, if this happens repeatedly, that when you go to trial, when you're asked a simple question, the jury is going to get very frustrated and wonder why can't you answer a simple question directly? Why can't you simply say, yes, I saw the doctor that date? And now the lawyer will ask additional follow-up questions. But don't think for a second that by giving a longer answer to explain all the steps that led up to such a simple question about making an appointment to see the doctor, that that's somehow going to affect and impact and influence your case favorably. The reality is, is that it won't. You see, many people are under the misapprehension, misconception is a better word, thinking that the purpose of a deposition is an opportunity for you to tell the opposing lawyer everything that happened in your case. All the minute little details leading up to the answers, leading up to the key events in your case. The reality is just the opposite. It is not the opportunity for you to tell the defense lawyer every single thing that happened. If you do that, you will be there for days and days and not do what you are supposed to do. So that is critically important. So pay attention to the question that is being asked. Now, on the other hand, if the defense lawyer turns around and says, hey, Mr. Jones, tell us why. Tell us why you did what you did when you got to the doctor's office. Now, that gives you the opportunity to go ahead and explain. And in fact, you should explain when he asks that type of question. So failing to pay attention to the question that is being asked will detrimentally hurt you and your case. Okay, let's talk about pitfall number two. Pitfall number two involves something a little different. Now your attorney is there with you, either on a Zoom video call or in person with you. And his goal is to make sure that the questions that you are asked are appropriate. Now what happens if he thinks that a question that you are asked is not appropriate? Well, the first thing he's going to do is yell out, OBJECTION! And then he's going to state a legal basis for why he believes that the question or the topic is inappropriate. You have to give your attorney a moment to make that objection if he feels it's necessary and not jump the gun and answer the question immediately after the lawyer stops talking. You gain no benefit by rushing to answer the defense lawyer's question. Whether it takes you 0.1 of a second to go ahead and answer the question or whether it takes you five seconds to now answer the question makes no difference whatsoever. You see, many months or years down the road, the next person who reads the transcript, all of the questions and all of the answers that you are asked, which is then transcribed and put into a booklet called the transcript, whoever is now going to be reading that, whether it's the judge, whether it's another attorney, they are not going to know and it's not going to make a big deal. It's not going to make a difference. Whether it took you one second to answer the question or whether it took you five seconds or 10 or 15 makes no difference whatsoever. So don't be in a rush to immediately answer the question. And many times you will know during the middle of the question you are being asked exactly what he wants to know. Don't answer it in the middle of the question. Wait for the attorney to finish asking the question. Then give your lawyer a moment to decide whether or not he's going to make an objection. And you'll see, you'll begin to get a flow and you'll begin to understand. You don't have to sit there and wait five seconds and turn to your attorney to see whether he's going to object. Just wait a moment. That's all you need to do. Wait a brief moment and then go ahead and answer the question because your attorney will know immediately if the question is right or wrong. And if it's wrong, he's going to yell out immediately, objection. And then he's going to tell you whether or not you can answer that question. There are some instances, very few, but there are some where the lawyer will turn around and tell you, your lawyer will tell you, don't answer that question. That's a palpably improper question. That's inappropriate. And now you have to wait for the next question. Your goal is to pay attention and listen to your attorney's cues. If you go ahead and jump the gun, you now have deprived your lawyer of the opportunity to make an objection, to state on the record why he believes that question or topic is inappropriate. So these are just two tips that if you don't pay attention to them, if you don't listen and understand why these are important, could 
detrimentally affect you and your case when you give pretrial testimony in a civil lawsuit in New York involving claims of medical malpractice, an accident matter, or even a wrongful death matter. You know, I realize you're likely watching this because you want to see the beautiful scenery. No. I realize you're watching this because you likely have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen in New York, and you are thinking about bringing a lawsuit, but have not done so yet because you still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know, I answer questions like yours every single day, and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. Well, that's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.